Ezekiel chapter number 2. Picking up right from chapter number 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. If you remember the last chapter, he said, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice, the one that spank. And the Spirit entered into me, that's the Holy Spirit, when, I, when he spank unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spank unto me. So the Holy Spirit causes him to rise up. You wait to see what the Holy Spirit will bring us to rising up one day. And he said unto me, Son of man, now that expression is 197 times in your Bible and 193 verses. 108 times in the Old Testament, 85 times in the New Testament. And it's also said of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel is 93 times. Matthew is 30. Mark is 14. Luke is 26. John 11 times. Acts once. And Revelation, you see it twice. And it's something to be said when Ezekiel is spoken as the son of man. And again, the Lord Jesus Christ is spoken of as the Son of Man. I send thee to the children of Israel. Well, what was the commission of the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 1? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Ezekiel's not going to be received, just like Jeremiah. To a rebellious nation. That's what the state of Israel was when Jesus was there. That has rebelled against me, God. You know, they rebelled against Jesus, God. They put him on a cross. They said, uh, they and their fathers, generations, 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 have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. Ezekiel is in Babylon. Now, Nebuchadnezzar has not fully destroyed Judah and Jerusalem. And yet God is speaking to Ezekiel saying, then you're in Babylon right now. That didn't work. And you're going to see a total of three times that, that uh, Judah and Jerusalem are sacked by Babylon. And the third time, no repentance, no one getting right, just destroys it all. God is telling Ezekiel the headlines of what's going on in Jerusalem. They're not getting right. And you're going to deal with these people who are in Babylon who are not doing right. So Jeremiah is preaching to those who's not doing right in Judah. Ezekiel is preaching to those who's not doing right in Babylon. For they are impotent children and stiff-hearted. That's what God's saying about his own people. Imagine what he says about us. I do send thee unto them. Ezekiel is called by God that thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Deuteronomy 31 27 and Jeremiah 17 23. Ezekiel is called by God to the Jews, as Jeremiah was, Jeremiah chapter 1. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Yet shall know that there have been a prophet among them. No excuses. I believe we had a few people come up to us with our street. Where are the results? Where did God tell Ezekiel is going to be his results? And they, the Jews that he's called to, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. They may not even hear you, Ezekiel. I've called you to go to the people of Daytona Beach. Is where I've sent you. Is where you are to be. It's to the people you preach to. And guess what? Whether they hear or whether they get right. For it's a most rebellious city. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. I'm a prophet. I can tell you exactly where you're going to go without Christ. I can tell you exactly where you're going to go with Christ. I'm a prophet. And one of these days, these people are going to know that Stiley Hayward was, was among them and preach the word of God to them, and they will be without excuse. That's why I tell them. Maybe every message or all my messages, I leave them without excuse when I walk away. They can never tell God, I never knew. 
I ruined their excuse. Ezekiel ruins their excuse. Ezekiel was sent from his home, Israel, I'm talking about the land, sent to Babylon to preach. I have been sent by God to Daytona Beach to tell the people what God has sent. And they don't like it. That's tough cookies. You go argue with God. I know you hear. That's one thing. Whether they will hear. I know they hear me. They tell me. God has, listen, you may not like my voice. You may not like my tone. You may not like my volume. But you better rest assured that my voice, my ways have been sent by God to go against you. I'm not going to use my loud voice to sing over a rock stage. I'm not going to use my loud voice to go on the radio. I'm not going to use my loud voice to announce horse racing. I'm going to use my voice that God has given me to raise it to full knowledge for the Lord Jesus Christ. There, rest assured. I want to hear well done. That's what I want to hear. That's what Ezekiel is going to hear. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. This is what he told Jeremiah. Neither be afraid of their words. Sticks and stones may break my bones. Though briars and thorns be with thee. How's that for a thing? Paul had a thorn. Ezekiel has a thorn. Ezekiel has been commissioned to suffer for the word of God. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. You know why a lot of people won't serve God? Because they don't want to suffer. When they get in your face and they pinch you and they tell you all kinds of mean little words and stuff like that. Listen, that's for the word of God. And though thou dwell among scorpions. What a way to describe the people. Scorpions sting with an awesome pain. If not death. Be not afraid of their words. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about the briars? What about the thorns? What about the scorpions? Don't be afraid of their words. Be not dismayed at their looks. If you've been in any public kind of ministry, you know what the words are. You know what the looks are. Though they be a rebellious house. Has anybody got saved by your street ministry? No, they're a rebellious city. I don't know if anybody's gotten saved. That's between them and God. I just preach the word and don't care what they say, don't care how they act, and don't care what they do. Would they make it illegal? Book of Acts. I'm going to still preach the word of God. I don't know how to do an underground church. And that moment and that time comes and God will have to show me to, an underground church or be loud and take the consequences. <laughs> Excuse me. Now here's a commission to me. And anybody will follow Mark 16. You ready? And thou shalt speak my words unto them. So I open the Bible and I read to them the Bible. No programs, no skits, no drama, no performances, no magic, no hocus pocus. The word of God I hold in my hands and read to them. Do you know how many times those people who sit in the booth, who do sell, you know how many times they've, they've heard John chapter 3? Do you know how many times they've had Isaiah 53 read to them? Do you know how many times they've had uh, Acts 16.31 read to them as their memory verse I give them? I quote over and over Acts 16.31 to they will repetition. They will get Acts 16.31. I do that purposely. Because they ever hear the word say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I, shall be. I want them to know it. 
even though they don't believe it. Maybe one day they will come to believe it. On to them. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. For they are most rebellious. Show me results there. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, I want you to go preach to my people. All right. You ain't going to get no converts. Today will be, oh, no. I got to have notches in my belt. I got to build a coliseum. Nope. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Don't you dare act like the world. How you like that one? Don't you take the world's characteristics. Don't you do the world's doings. You stand up and be a man of God, son of man. Open thy mouth. And eat that I give thee. I try to have a daily dose of God's word. And when I looked, Ezekiel, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, when it was written within and without, on both sides. And there was written therein, Lamentations, I don't know if that's the book we just did, I don't think so. I don't think that book would made it to Ezekiel. Lamentations was written after the fall of Jerusalem. Ezekiel is in Babylon between the first and the final. But Lamentations wouldn't have been written. This is Lamentations is going to happen. Morning. That don't mean sunrise and you know, have your breakfast. And woe. When the Bible says woe, you bear woe. There is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Positive. When Jer when Ezekiel, I'm going to say Jeremiah now. When Ezekiel is going to go out preaching. Now later on, we're going to read about good things. We're going to read about the millennium. We're going to read about the kingdom. We're going to read about the wonderful things and some things I have no idea what he's talking about. But right now, the message to the Jews is not positive. Why don't you preach love? Why don't you preach? Because. I'm going to preach Lamentations, Mourning, and Woe. I'm going to preach to Hell Fire. Because that's the first place you got to get out of before you can get the good stuff. When we can get you out of Hell, then we can preach the good stuff. But right now, you're burning in Hell, John chapter 3. The condemnation has already happened to those who have not believed. And I'm told by Ezekiel, I'm told by the Holy Spirit, they may not even hear you. And if they do, they may not even forbear. I'm not looking for positive results. Like John the Baptist, I am a voice. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say go in your world and get them all saved. I'm not like, you know, uh, William Cartwright. He knocked a guy down off the horse and beat him up until he professed salvation. I don't think that guy who professed to be salvation by getting fists in his face, I don't think he was saved. That's a weird kind of easy believism under the fist. But that guy would do that. Which is more worth just to say these just say this prayer and you'll be saved. Just as worth. Now I'm not going to do that. And the Bible says you're not saved. I'm going to tell you you're not saved. By the actions of the Bible. Judge not least you be judged. The Bible says I can judge things, not people. The Bible says that. And Jeremiah is going to be sent to people, not in his hometown, to his own people, and they're not going to listen. They're going to talk words about him. They're going to try to mess him up. They're going to give him a hard time, and God says, do not fear. Just open your mouth and preach my word. That's a commission that I have. Jeremiah, I mean, Zeke, like I say, here I go, Jeremiah. Ezekiel is going to be a typical street preacher. 
a man of God that every preacher in the pulpit should liken himself to. You know why you got these fluffy, marshmallow uh, pastors in the pulpit? Because they fear the people. Read the Gospels. But well, we answer this way. They saw John as a prophet and we fear the people. And they never got right with God. You want to get right with God? You fear God, the Bible says. And never mind what the people have to say. Ezekiel and Jeremiah stood alone their entire life. Jesus died on the cross alone. All they that suffer, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And we're going to see it with Ezekiel just like we did with Jeremiah. 